Is it time for our watch along? Well, Jim, before we get to this match, and so everyone could start setting things up, of course, Starcade 85 on the WWE Network under the in ring section. Go to WCW Pay Per Views 1985 Starcade. And this is Tully Blanchard versus Magnum TA for the U.S. title in a steel cage. I quit match rules. What would you like to say leading into this match? Well, I I said before we went on the air, I'm not going to give the whole build up to this. You can watch the shows on the network, the Saturday night shows, a lot of the syndication. You can see how the build went for this. But basically, the reason why I wanted to watch it, not only because it's Thanksgiving anniversary, but because we had the I quit matches here lately where I was... <laughs> You can't kill the guy and he'd be dead because then he can't lose the match because he's not conscious to say, I quit. And just these ridiculous extrapolations of loopholes that you, just because it's not written down doesn't mean it's not a rule. Yeah, in the I quit match, yeah, the guy would lose if he was unconscious, but it's a work. So you, the whole idea of this match was two grown adult men that had not only a fight over the U.S. title, but a personal issue, a hatred, an animosity for each other, that the people believed they hated each other. And they finally had to settle it man-on-man, where the most demeaning, most humiliating thing that could happen to one of these guys was for the other one to force them to say, I quit, on the ring microphone, in front of a huge audience. And they're going to have a fight like two guys that hate each other that are trying to make each other say, I quit. And just so you can watch the build up and they'd been feuding over the belt and et cetera, et cetera. But that's the premise of the match. It had gone this far that this was the ultimate blow off. And also remember going into this, that Magnum, this was November, 1985. He'd only been into business three and a half years. Um, he had been pushed fairly quickly because of his look and his build and his ability. And, but he was still, even though he was on top at this point, being used in a main event position, he had so much further to go and would have gotten so much better. And unfortunately it was 11 months after this, the car wreck, October of 86. Um, and people look back and because they remember the name and he was all, he, he was figured in, in, in mid South, you know, we had the program with him and, wrestling too he was already tag team champion in 84 and then he became a singles champion so he'd been pushed and used and he had a really bright future and had come a long way already but tully is the captain of this ship because tully's the guy that was the veteran he was the experienced one so they obviously this wasn't called as as people think of matches today uh, where the, every move is laid out ahead of time but you had Tully in the ring calling things or just saying, come back or sell or stop or go or whatever. But it was a lot of ad lib and extrapolation as most matches were in those days. Real quick, the rest of the card, Starcade 85, the third Starcade. This was the first one that was done simultaneously in both the Omni in Atlanta and the Greensboro Coliseum. And that worked for a couple of years, as long as you didn't take it away from Greensboro and had other matches in the Omni, it made it bigger. So real briefly, the matches in the Omni, and there's a couple of these that, you know, were warm-up matches, obviously, and didn't make the main telecast, but the, the deal they did was, this was closed circuit, this was before pay-per-view, they'd have a match in Greensboro, and you'd see that on the screen in the Omni, then they'd have a match in the Omni, and you'd see that on the screen in Greensboro, and they alternated all night, so in Atlanta, Thunderfoot, which I believe was Joel Deaton, beat the Italian Stallion. Pez Watley beat Mike Graham. Manny Fernandez beat Abdullah the Butcher in the Mexican death match that later Manny claimed was supposed to be the main event of Starcade 85, but Dusty got <laughs> Dusty got egotistical and put him and Flair on last. Anyway, superstar Billy Graham beat the Barbarian in an arm wrestling contest and then beat the Barbarian in a wrestling match by disqualification. Ole and Arn Anderson beat Wahoo McDaniel and Billy Jack Haynes. Jimmy Valiant and Miss Atlanta Lively beat the Midnight Express in a street fight. Uh, and of course, Miss Atlanta Lively was Ron Garvin. Watch the build up on that one, too. Maybe some of you can explain it to me. But in all honesty, <laughs> Dusty wanted us to be in a, a feature match on Starcade. 
And it didn't mean we had to go over because he knew that we could, you know, have a good gimmick match, especially being from Tennessee and, and do a job there. And it wasn't going to hurt us in the long run. Cause we're fixing to go with the rock and roll. Um, Jimmy Valiant as one of his street people had brought in Miss Atlanta Lively, who was Ronnie Garvin in drag and God damn it. We still had a bloody street fight, but with Ronnie Garvin dressed as a woman, he did such a good job of it. The, the first day they did it on Atlanta TV, Barbarian saw Ronnie dressed up from across the fucking locker room area we used at TBS. He's like, ooh, who's the new girl? So that would have been interesting if nobody had told Barb. Anyway, uh, and then the main event in Atlanta was Dusty Rhodes beating uh, Ric Flair by disqualification in the NWA title match. In Greensboro, they saw Denny, Denny Brown beat Rocky King, Don Cronodal beat Tommy Lane, and then on the show, Crusher Khrushchev beat Sam Houston. It was the tournament final for the NWA Mid-Atlantic heavyweight title. Ron Bass beat Black Bart in a uh, bull rope match, which they had been partners. J.J. Dillon then beat Ron Bass in a bull rope match. J.J. had been their manager, blah, blah, blah. Buddy Landell beat Terry Taylor uh, to win the NWA national title. As you can see, Greensboro got a little bit stronger card. Magnum uh, and Tully in the I Quit match. And then the Rock and Roll Express in the NWA World Tag Title match against Ivan and, Nita, and Nikita Koloff. And the Rock and Roll went over in another, it was a double cage match on top. Another cage match, no time limit, no disqualification. That's the card and just some business metrics real quick. Um, it sold out the Greensboro Coliseum, 16,000 people paid $307,000. The Omni drew a little bit over 15,000 people and the house was 285 grand. And this was not as big as Starcade 86 with the closed circuit locations. Uh, Starcade 86, they did more closed circuit locations and even in Kansas City, et cetera. And it watered a few of them down somewhat. But on this one, Charlotte did 70 grand. Norfolk did 44,700. Spartanburg, South Carolina did 54, 54 grand in Spartanburg to watch the show on a big screen. Roanoke did 25 grand. <clears throat> and in the Superdome in New Orleans, they did $100,000, $98,000. Uh, but there was, Watts did a co-promotion and had the major matches on the big screen, but had uh, several matches of his own there live from Mid-South, did he, or UWF by that time, did he not? Yeah, uh, Nick Patrick beat Tommy Wright. Butch Reed and Nick Patrick beat Dick Slater and Buzz Sawyer via disqualification. And Jake Roberts beat Lord Humongous via DQ. But basically, all in all, the gross for everything I just mentioned was about $880,000, which at the time would have been the biggest, until Starcade 86, the biggest one-night gross for an NWA event, and the most important things, on Thanksgiving night, over 60,000 fans left their homes on Thanksgiving to go to some venue, whether live or closed circuit, and see this event in some form or fashion. That ain't bad. Uh, but anyway, that's the business of all of this, and... This is the enduring match from this show, don't you think? Without question. Without question. You know, on uh, in some of the big shows in that era, the case can be made for a different match or two. But on this one, this is the one that everybody remembers. So, w tell them how to do this thing, funky white boy. You want to go on the WWE Network to Starcade 85. Once again, it's under in-ring. You will scroll down to WCW pay-per-view events. You can look under Starcade and go to 1985, or you can look under 1985 and go to Starcade. It's the only option for 1985 under WCW pay-per-views. And it's not even really a pay-per-view because no, there was not. no pay-per-view at the time. They don't know how to classify it otherwise. Closed circuit gets its own category. You want to go to one hour, 27 minutes, and 34 seconds into Starcade 85, an easy option is the Jump 2 option underneath the video, and you'll see the video listed as Tully Blanchard versus Magnum TA U.S. title. Once again, 1 hour, 27 minutes, 34 seconds into Starcade 85. And and we're going to be talking over this, but with the put the crowd down a little bit behind you so you can hear these people go berserk at various points. <laughs> 